Hello everyone and welcome to this exciting new lecture on transfer learning. If you guys remember, in the previous lecture, we have been able to understand the difference between precision, recall, and we went through as well a quick mini challenge. I hope you guys were able to figure it out when we compared the, um, the performance of the model when we tried to perform fraud detection at a bank or when we do spam, ham, email classification. Okay, so the next topic that I wanted to cover right now, which is again categorized as more on the intermediate to advanced side, is known as transfer learning. And before I get started with the concept of transfer learning, I wanted to quote uh, an important, I would say, comment that Elon Musk have mentioned, is that he basically war warns humans about the dangers of AI and essentially, he, his comment is, AI could create an immortal dictator from which we can never escape. So what he mentioned is that the least scary future he could think of is when we have at least democratized AI. Simply, that's a scenario when AI is not concentrated in the hands of a small group of people because if that's, if that's the case, then they are like godlike. You know, they have super intelligence and super power that you can defeat, right? And that's why Elon Musk started the uh, open AI company in which to try to democratize AI and make it available to everyone, essentially. And here's a link to the article. I highly recommend that you guys read it and maybe watch a couple of the videos where he tried to warn people about the dangers of AI. So the question is like, why am I mentioning that right now? Basically what I'm mentioning, I'm mentioning that right now because it's closely tied to the concept of which is known as transfer learning. Okay, so what is transfer learning? Transfer learning is a machine learning technique in which an AI that has been trained to do a given task has been repurposed as a starting point for another similar task. So, if you guys think about it, we as humans, let's say if we master, for example, skating, you will find that people who generally are good at skating, they can easily learn how to ski, for example. Why? The idea here is that they can reuse some of the skill set, some of that intelligence. You can repurpose it to a different kind of similar task in a way which is again requires pretty much the same movements, right? And that's what we call it knowledge transfer. So in the same fashion, we do that as well when it comes to AI. So transfer learning is widely used since starting from a pre-trained AI model can dramatically reduce the computational time required if training is performed from scratch. And uh, I'm mentioning transfer learning in here because when we built our two projects, which is essentially our um, um, COVID-19 um, X-ray uh, detection, and also when we cover the Emotion AI project, which is what we're covering right now, we essentially have used some sort of transfer learning behind the scenes. So if you guys notice, when we try to train our AI model in both scenarios, actually training didn't take that long. You know, even when we fed like 400 images or, or so, like it, it wasn't that, I would say, extensive. It wasn't that computationally expensive. And we have been able to achieve pretty good results, I would say, in, in like in less than a minute, which is pretty, pretty incredible. And the idea here is that the AI model behind the scene did not start from scratch. So you actually did not start from plain, randomly initialized, weights or randomly initialized artificial neural network. You actually started from somewhere, started from some intelligence. We have been able to actually feed in our images to a network that has already been pre-trained in the past. So let's um, actually go ahead to this link. It's actually very, very, uh, I would say, um, uh, important link. So I actually have, have it open in here. So if you guys see here, this is a really nice article by Janik Karam MSV here. And he talks about Google Teachable Machine. And if you scroll down, you should be able to see the magic behind Teachable Machine is based on a popular 
deep learning technique known as transfer learning. So most of the neural network architecture of a fully trained model is retrained while replacing a minor part of it based on the data. And this approach not only requires less compute power, but also requires a small data set for training. And Google is leveraging some of the best deep learning and neural network models for teachable machines. So basically, again, we use transfer learning of some sort behind the scenes when we use teachable Google teachable machines. So let's dig a little bit deeper into what do we actually mean by transfer learning? Here we go. If you guys recall, in the previous project, we learned about the basics of convolutional neural networks, or CNN for short. So let me review that in a nutshell. So if you guys remember, here we had an image, which was the um, chest uh, images here. And we, what we did is that we performed convolution first. So essentially, we try to extract general features from our image. And we created various, what we call it, feature maps, if you guys recall. And then we perform pooling or downsampling by trying to reduce the size of these features, which is what we got in here. And then afterwards, we took all these feature maps and then we flattened them up. So we flattened it up here. And then we connected a dense, fully connected artificial neural network. And then this is simply what we call it CNN or convolutional neural network in a nutshell. So a very important point to illustrate in here is that early layers, like all these convolutions here, they try to capture what we call it general features. Once you go deeper in the network, specifically here when it goes to, this, to the classification head, we actually try to perform what we call it classification specific layers. And essentially early layers here capture what we call it general features. And as you go deeper, more complex features are being captured. So the question is, why are you mentioning that right now? I'm mentioning that because that's the concept of transfer learning. So what we do here is that we essentially take our artificial neural network. So as you guys notice here, this is a pre-trained network that has already been trained before on millions of images known as ImageNet, okay? So this is a pre-trained network. And what we do when it comes to transfer learning is that we take the network and we actually break it, I would say, into two parts. We take all the early layers, these are pre-trained convolution layers here, and we transfer the trained parameters. Think of it as you are essentially like taking the intelligence that has been captured before as a start and use it as a starting point to a new network. So you essentially take all these feature, feature detectors and feature maps here, and you transfer them to a new network. So what we got in here. And then what we do is that we add a new dense layer, okay? And this part here, that's the new part. That's the new artificial neural network that you are going to train with your new images, with your new data. Let's say if it's chest data, or if it's, let's say, the um, facial images, which is what we use in this project, in project two, which is Emotion AI uh, project. So essentially, again, please note that when we trained our um, AI model in Google Teachable Machines, we did not start from scratch. We actually took a pre-trained network beforehand that has been trained on ImageNet dataset, and I'm gonna cover ImageNet in the next lecture. And we essentially took this network, we transferred all that intelligence in here, and then we added our own new artificial neural network just at the end, and then we trained the network. And that's why, when you guys notice, if the training did not take much, it's just it, will, it was very, very fast, very quick, probably like a minute or so. And that's why, because we leverage already a pre-trained artificial neural network in the past. So the first CNN layers, as I mentioned, are used to extract high-level general features. And the last couple of layers are used to perform classification on a specific task. So what we do is that we copy the first trained layers or what we call it the base model. So that's the base model. We move it as is. And then we add the new custom layers in the output to perform classification on a specific a given task. If it's, let's say, COVID-19 detection or if it's an emotion AI as well classification. Okay, so the question is, what are the advantages of transfer learning? 
So the advantages of transfer learning is first, fast training. You don't have to start from scratch. You don't have to start from randomly initialized weights. The second point is, well, you can use a small training data sets to achieve incredible results. So for example, in our case, we only had like 100 images per class, which is pretty incredible. And when it comes to the training strategy of transfer learning, what we do is that we freeze the trained CNN network weights from the first layers. So we actually transfer the knowledge here, and then we freeze those layers. And what we do afterwards is that we add a new dense artificial neural network, which is what we got in here. And then we train only this, right? And that's the strategy when it comes to training of our uh, artificial neural network based on transfer learning technique. OK, so we only have one slide here that we uh, essentially missed. It's more of uh, additional details on transfer learning. So transfer learning is the improvement of learning in a new task through the transfer of knowledge from a related task that has already been learned before. And this is actually a great book known as Transfer Learning. Uh, it's in 2009, actually. And in transfer learning, what we did is that there was a base, or what we call it a reference, artificial neural network, that has already been pre-trained before. So we take it, and then we repurpose it somehow to perform a new task that is quite similar to the original one. And transfer learning works great if the features are general, such as the trained weights can effectively be repurposed, and intelligence being transferred from the base network to the newly target network. And I actually like really like transfer learning, and it kind of scares me as well in a way. So if we want to compare, let's say, humans to AI, one of the major, I would say, drawbacks of humans is that we unfortunately die. And when we die, all that intelligence that has been captured in our brains die as well. Yes, you can retain some of that in, let's say, in form of books or maybe videos or maybe, let's say, audios. But the actual brain, the actual intelligence is gone, right? And that's one of the drawbacks of humans. For example, let's say Einstein's brain. You can still keep the knowledge, for example, that he came up you know, with and all the research and all of that in form of books and form of videos or whatever. But the only problem is, is that when he died, we did not capture his brain. We did not capture his intelligence somewhere. And that's one of the huge benefits when it comes to AI. And that's why, you know, let's tie it back to uh, Elon's comment here, is that when it, happen when it comes to transfer learning, you are essentially transferring all the intelligence that has been captured beforehand, and it never dies. It just you are building on it. You are just improving over time, and there is no way back, essentially. And that's why the ultimate, I would say, future is to try to democratize AI and make it available for everyone. Okay? All right. So that's it. That's all I have for this lecture. I hope you guys enjoyed it. In the next lecture, I'm going to cover a couple of key topics that you guys might encounter in the AI ML field, which is off-the-shelf networks, like if you can actually want it to maybe train um, like a complex model, but you don't, you don't have the compute power or maybe you don't have the data, how can you leverage off-the-shelf networks that are open and readily available for you? I'm also going to cover ResNets or residual neural networks. And I'm also going to cover a very important data set known as ImageNet data sets. And these are, I would say, key important topics when it comes to the AI field. I just wanted to cover, cover it. And once, uh, once we conclude that, what we're going to do afterwards is that we're going to conclude our project with a final project, I would say like a large assignment per se, when I'm asking you guys to take this project a step further and build your own Emotion AI model. So that's all I have. I hope you guys enjoyed this lecture and see you in the next one.